poem excluding politics. Everyone we know with brown hair, blonde hair, black hair, and strawberries in their mouths on the floor of a silent house in the suburbs. Everyone we know with a goatee, a mohawk, a head shaved as a symbol of surrender. Life is what it feels like when you say, it would be good to see you again with shifting weather patterns and children constantly gravitating toward the monkey bars to start another subculture. The sky moves over them like a bodyguard in a low budget film. Everyone we know gives us a look that says, I'll tell you later. Welcome to season four of How Now. This is our 16th episode and I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all of the... Shit. Uh, I just want to take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has watched uh, the show and to everyone who has participated in the show. Thank you so much. You have been uh, a bright spot in a very difficult time. Uh, for everyone. The resiliency of artists is something that, um, you know, I think we can all learn from, and that's the goal with the show, uh, to get into the ideas of, of process and how creativity um, moves around obstacles that we find in our daily lives. So, if you're interested, please click the subscribe button because the Arts Collaboratory is going to be doing incredible things throughout 2021 and into 2022. So here's to a brighter future and thank you so much for watching. It's pretty odd to be talking about, you know, art and uh, and process with with everything that happened yesterday. The like blatant insurrection. It's it's mind blowing. I yeah, I'm kind of lost. Yeah, I mean, I'm a real. I'm sort of especially in the Trump era, I've been kind of a news junkie anyway. So yeah, I didn't get anything done yesterday because I was just like reading and watching and listening to like cable news feed and stuff like that. So, but yeah. I, I mean, honestly, like this is. It's the perfect season for, or it's the perfect series finale to the Trump years. But like, what it's really gonna do is like solidify in everybody's heads like the inevitability of this collapse. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And people are like, no, we had good achievements and blah, blah, blah. It's like, all of it, it'll look like a big arc. It's a narrative arc that now has the perfect end to it, where it's like, that will allow people to be like, yeah, he's the worst president ever. That's yeah, I mean, without, without a doubt, uh, that's 100%. And I think, that, and it's, yeah, the inevitability of, you know, the tensions that have existed in, in this country for, since its founding, essentially. I mean, that, I mean what, ha what we saw yesterday is, you know, things that we have done, we have supported in, in other countries and in other places. And it's always, you know, the, the narrative on, on, you know, the news and everything that I was watching yesterday was like, 
oh, it's always out there. It's always this other thing. And it's just like, no, this is the festering boil that has, you know, been just been waiting for some weird fetish person to be empowered. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think these last four years have revealed a ton. Even I have been blown away by like what compromises people are willing to make for Trump. And like the QAnon thing is like another level of like, all bets are kind of off. But you, but it helps you understand how these things happen in other places or, you know, other cultures or like, you know, how people get swept up in irrational ideas and so forth. Because things got so extreme yesterday, that does like, I hopefully like separate the hardcore people from the kind of casual Trump voter where it's like, you can be like, is this really what you want? And so I, I kind of wanted to, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, how you have been able to create you know, your career uh, from Buffalo and how you've been able to, you know, move in different ways, uh, you know, in different, in different aspects of, you know, illustration, mural painting, branding, uh, graphic design, all of these really, you know, you have a very large wheelhouse. Well, actually, I can give you my, like, let me give you my, like, nutshell sure. career, because it isn't, it's not really very by the book. Um, yeah. So just the nuts and bolts of it, like I, I didn't go to college for graphic design or for art. Um, I went to Hampshire College in Western Massachusetts, which is kind of an experimental college. And I did media studies, but not like the fun kind where you make stuff, more like writing about media. Mm -hmm. um, but I basically, I, my dad taught design history at Buff State, as well as like eventually figure drawing and perspective drawing and boat building. He did a lot of, he's done a lot of different things. Um, and as an art historian, so and I grew up in an artistic household, like my uncle's a com composer, sort of avant-garde classical composer. The idea that these possibilities, do you know what I mean, for kind yeah. of experimental stuff were there. Grew up with a lot of like 70s Danish and Polish posters in the house and very cool yeah. things like that. Like was like, when I was two, my parents were in Denmark for, in Copenhagen for like six months. My father was teaching there. So like spent third grade in England, part of it. Um, so it's sort of like I had like a fairly rich childhood in the way that I was exposed to things, art and design. But I didn't, go, I didn't go to college for any of those things. Once I graduated, it was like, oh yeah, I really wanna do like, yeah, graphic design, that's what I wanna do. So I looked at going back to school and it was like too, just take too much. And this is also just like, this is 1996. So like what was possible like on a home computer was just changing, do you know what I mean? So like it was right at the moment where like you could go learn these programs on your own and then kind of work on them. So like I kind of was starting from scratch. Like I'd been in England and Ireland for a year after college, kind of just like working jobs and um, working on kind of illustration stuff, paper cuts and just stuff on my own. Yeah. And I came back to the US, like realized what I need to do. And then I eventually got a job as a sort of a paid intern at the Buffalo Museum of Science on this science education project. That eventually developed into a job where I was art director for the, the like company that we became after we left the Science Museum. So that I learned graphic design in the job. I started doing that. I started doing freelance stuff for Hall Walls and just Buffalo Literary Center. Yeah. Um, around like 99, 2000. I started was doing art on the side. I had this project about stray shopping carts that really took off. But by 2004, I was represented by a gallery in New York. By 2006, my book about the stray shopping cart project had come out. And at that time, I had enough from the advance in that book, actually, where I quit my job and went, fully freelance. So since then, I've been um, working as a graphic designer, working as a, you know, having a contemporary art career, which has these like huge ups and downs. Four years ago, maybe like Instagram really started accelerating kind of my whole thing. Like, yeah, yeah. like so, so, so now, I mean, to the point where like now I have 82,000 followers and um, Pre, pretty and pretty high quality in the sense that like a lot of people in the art and design world follow me, um, and almost all of my opportunities come through that. Uh, in some you, you mean you don't have J K six nine six nine four twenty like yeah. you know, or <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> Russian uh, debutantes <laughs> looking for, um, but through all this like back when I started doing art and I was doing graphic design. And there's always been a lot of graphic design in my art, like my shopping cart project. It's like, you know, like lots of text and numbers and like yeah. things laid out, information. Yeah. Uh, back then it was more common, but you know, you'd get this, you'd meet people in the art world where it was like, well, you can't do both of these things. Do you know what I mean? But I think a lot of artists were kind of trying, if they did have some side gig doing design or something, they would try to hide that. Do you know what I mean? You kind of like, 
but I just like you have one website for that and another website for your work, your artwork. In a way, like I started my, my I almost got into contemporary art because I started doing my shopping up project as a way to do a design project. Yeah. To, so I'd always wanted to 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 make something of myself in the design world, and the art part of it came along. The, you know, what I mean, ended up developing out of it. So those two things grew together, and I never sort of separated them. And and now the the sort of fruit of that is that on Instagram, I my Insta, I, I sort of curate interesting mid-century graphic design that I find. I like post my own design work and my own artwork. And a lot of my own artwork is this fictional design, designs that I make for these fictional institutions. But what's interesting now is like someone wants me to design something and the stuff that they like is like, they'll be like, oh yeah, I like this painting you did and I like this thing you designed. Yeah. So like, it's sort of, oh, and I like this thing that you posted. So the whole sort of aesthetic of what I like do ends up being the thing that people are drawn to. Yeah. It's a, everybody, it's about finding these niche audiences for the interest in what you're doing, you know? Yeah. And so in that sense, like, I have nothing but positive things to say about our current digital age because it's allowed this kind of access to people that just was unthinkable before. It's very funny, I, like my art, my, the official beginning for me of my art career, exhibition career, was um, a show I had at the Olean Public Library back in, it was on September 8th, 2001. Oh, wow. So September 11th was two days later. So really wiped any mention in the Olean press of uh, my, <laughs> my but um, you realize just like how flexible these things are. It's also this, that experience of like having that success with the shopping cart project, which for the, because the book, I had the book and then the book like won the prize for the oddest book title of 2006. So I was literally like, you know, interviewed on the BBC World Service. And like, I was, you know, Whoa. standing in my kitchen giving a radio interview with like, you know, millions of people listening. And it was in every like English language newspaper in the world. I mean, it's just a ridiculous thing, right? Winning this prize for the odd book title. Th that, 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 like getting known, like getting known, like doesn't, it doesn't last very long in a funny way. It does last a long time in a short time. And you realize you can, you can be almost well known and like have it not lead to money in any significant way. <laughs> now I'm known by this whole group of people on Instagram and none of them even know that that is part of like what my past was, you know? Yeah. Which is sort of interesting. It's interesting how it goes. You sort of realize like, as I've gone through my career, you're always watching these other people's art careers and stuff. Cause it's sort of mysterious. You know what I mean? You're like, how did that guy get to like, you know, sell paintings for $50,000 a piece? Yeah. And then you realize, like, or like, I remember, like, God, like, I just wanted to have a show in Chelsea. And then I had a show in Chelsea, too, actually. And it's like, yeah, but all these, like, a hundred other people are also having shows in Chelsea this month. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, like, or you want to be in the Whitney Biennial, and it's like, then you look at the Whitney, and it's like, but where, is our, where are all those people now from, like, five years ago? It's like, it's very funny, because, I mean, art and music, it's just, like, you get people concentrated at the top of the pyramid, but, like, the world is populated by so, so many more people. Um, and what I think is cool now is that like you, with like Instagram and other platforms, you're cutting out a middleman, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. which is what I'm sick of is like the gatekeepers, you know what I mean? Like you can find, you can put your stuff out there and people can see it and think about it, you know, as opposed to like waiting for someone somewhere to say it's okay for you to show your work. Now. It allows for, for, people to directly communicate with a larger audience and gather all of the opportunities for success that they can. And to me also crucially, like it allows people to like be in Buffalo, New York and do you know what I mean? And, and be like, then go and do something in France or whatever, like I've done. But what was part of what inspired me was like Craig Reynolds, um, Basta, you know, mm -hmm. meeting him, he and Betsy, and that idea of like Buffalo as being this place where we have like nothing to lose, you know, where you could do anything here because there's like, this is different now, but at the time it's like, we're like at this, you know, whatever, this sort of like end of this burnt out industrial time and like it's open spaces and destroyed buildings and like, and so that I think was really inspiring to me in that idea. Also because I think being a like white cisgendered male or whatever from like, honestly, like, and then going to a very radical college like Hampshire, it's like almost the only identifying thing I have is that I come from Buffalo, New York. <laughs> Do you know what I mean like uh, it's not like there's anything else I got where I'm going to be standing with pride behind my, you know what I mean, like yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my heritage or something, you know? And so it's like kind of the only thing I know is like being from this underdog place, <laughs> and like, and so in a way, like I feel like I I 
that I like that part of it. Like, I don't know if I'd know what to do with myself if I were like a New Yorker <laughs> living in New York, complaining about New York. The history try- of complaining in Buffalo is just so much more rich. But yeah, the idea of being here and making something out of this was exciting to me uh, in this community. And I mean, there's a good community here, of course. Like, yeah. wouldn't be able to stay if that weren't true. How now?